We're gonna go over if the NHL combine is ridiculous, and we're gonna start, right? Nah. So when I'm looking at ice hockey, I think a couple big factors come into mind. There needs to be an extraordinary amount of strength from the quads, from the glutes. If we think about the stride of the actual skating pattern, that's where most of our power output is going to come from. The other big factor is that ice hockey players are holding hip flexion constantly, okay? Very, very rarely at high speeds are they not in some period of hip flexion. So there's gonna be some differences on how we would train an ice hockey player based around how we would train that individual who might be in a sport like football or lacrosse or soccer. So we also have to recognize that. On top of that, we do wanna have some size on the hockey player as well. And that will likely transfer to a better pattern of how they strike the puck and they will have more power output. So if we can look through training the quads, training the glutes effectively, focusing on that trunk control and making sure that their skills are effective, that's what we're gonna look for inside of an elite hockey player. Now, what I wanna do is go into what's the NHL combine then? Are they taking this? Are they taking those skills that we need? Are they taking the size? Are they taking the power output from the quads and the glutes? Are they taking the lat strength, the ab strength, all of these factors into play when they're actually grading out their specific players? So let's go into this and actually look through this. Amazon, you gotta step up your your ads here. I shouldn't be getting the Spanish ad. Okay, so here we're gonna go into ooh, Connor Bedard right here, runs the agility course during the NHL Combine. That's when 23 last year. So they go through an FMS, which is interesting. So they're, you know, they're going through some type of movement screening, how mobile are they? And one thing that's interesting with my experience with hockey players is they don't do as much overhead work as I think they probably should do. So sometimes these in these FMS scores, they might not be as mobile. The other interesting part, when you get them on land versus on ice, they're really, really tight in certain areas and very mobile in other areas. So they, on dry land versus on ice, they're very, very, very agile. They're not as fast linearly as somebody who might be comparable at the athletic level as them, but from an agile perspective, like cutting, because of how much force they're constantly putting into the, into the ice from really their glute meat actually and their quads, it's crazy to see how agile they tend to be on dry land. Now, you can see this FMS stuff. I think that's great. I think that's pretty simple. Now, grip strength. I think this is interesting. They're using a grip dynamometer. I think it's, it's a simple test. I don't think it's outrageous. I think it's a little odd that that's in their combine. Like grip dyna dynamometers are actually used to sort of predict longevity with a lot of uh, aging generations. I think Tufts did a whole paper on this. Like the older in men specifically over the age of 80, the stronger their grip was, uh, the longer they would live. Do you need this in a combine for a professional sport where there's millions and millions of dollars on the line? Like I think that this is something that probably would get taken care of with some other exercises, doing pull-ups or explosive pull-ups or, it's, it's a little weird. I, I just think it's a little weird. Yeah, you know, it's an easy test. They could probably roll through it pretty quickly, but they could probably roll through it while they're actually doing their tests for the, the FMS. Now, this is where I actually wanted to bring up. When we look at a hockey game, it's incredibly challenging physically. There's a massive amount of force uh, there's that, that is constantly put into the blades. There's a very, you know, every single time and I, I always talk about the the concept of impulse okay so force and time force and time force and time so when someone's skating the the stroke that they're putting into the ice is going to be that's the time allowed and if they can put a massive amount of force into that stroke they're going to be faster the problem is is that then if we look at the bioenergetics of that aspect they're going to be using more energy to do that so we need to make sure that something like their vo2 max is high high enough to handle that recovery. And that's the interesting part that I think the NFL potentially misses out on is that if we have a higher VO2 max, we can handle more power output for a longer period of time. I do believe that from a baseline aspect, it'd be ideal for somebody in the NFL 
to test their VO2 max and get a baseline test and try to push that while they're also trying to increase their power output, increase their strength, all these things. So for the NHL to actually have a VO2 max test in their combine, I think is freaking phenomenal because it's a really, really key aspect around the sport. If you have somebody who goes out on their first shift and then on their second shift, they're only going at 80% of what they did on their first shift, they're going to be a waste of an investment. But if we have somebody who can go out on their first shift and then by their sixth shift in the game, they're at 97, 98% of where they were on their first shift because they have a higher VO2 max and because the athletes recognize that they're prioritizing it, all of a sudden we're going, yes, this VO2 max test is really, really effective. It's really positive. And I, I don't know why a sport like, like football wouldn't use this more because I think essentially too, it's like, you can improve your VO2 max and not really take away a ton of strength uh, and power output. So this is pretty cool. So they went through and they, they actually go through test duration. So some of these guys went like 13 and a half minutes, 13, 48, which is good. Great. And then they're, dude, these are serious scores. If you're scoring a 45, you probably have the VO2 max to go run a marathon as long as you have the mileage. Okay. As long as you have like the mileage, like I know this for a fact because that's around where I'm at and I've run a marathon. These guys, 66 64 63 phenomenal that's great absolutely great so that's that's a cool measurement i think the nfl could learn from that here uh, great applied work i'd like to see a a ratio of like total ice time versus vo2 max like what's that ratio look like because i bet you that would be a pretty big indicator also how much time they're on the ice in a game versus what their vo2 max is so now we're looking at height and wingspan measurements. You know, that's reasonable, it doesn't take that much. I think that's that's pretty simple. And then body comp, percentage of body fat. These guys are saying six, up to seven and a half percent body fat. I would like to see how they're measuring that. That's very low. I don't know if I buy that entirely. Like, the, like I wanna see the methods that they're using for their, for their actual body fat percentage. Standing long jump, okay. So one big factor here is that if we're doing a standing long jump, they're doing basically a broad jump, right? So what this is gonna show us is the counter movement, how well they take vertical displacement and then transfer that horizontally. I think that's a big aspect around skating. Uh, they're basically gonna be going through much pretty simple example how they can do this power output. And I wanna see here, so we got 118. And in the past, I'll be honest, I've been extraordinarily critical of the results from the NHL combine. And I know that there's actually combine camps for the NHL. And I've seen these results and I've wondered what these professionals are paying their, their strength coaches because their results are so bad. Now, what we're seeing here on screen, 118 inches is 9.83 feet. So we're at like 9.9, nine, 9.8. Nine, I've probably got 15 to 20 high school kids that can jump like a 9.6. So like, does this equate to the best hockey player? Not really. Does it show us that they're explosive and they're good athletes? Yes, but then we're looking at this. Barely, barely, the like top 10 are barely getting over nine feet. I don't think that that's reasonable. I think a lot of these guys should be jumping like nine, eight to 10, two. That's the one thing not one thing, but that's one of the many things that in the NFL combine, these guys are just putting out incredible numbers. You'll have D tackles that'll jump 10 feet. You know, Brandon George, who's one of our guys, it's a, he's a starting linebacker at Pitt. He's jumped like 10, six and he weighs like 250. And it's like, these ice hockey players should be jumping further than this. Yeah, I, it's not bad. You know, the 118, not bad, but for what their sport is, I think it should be higher. Now, jump station force plates, okay. So what this is gonna show us, and here you see AccuPower dual force plate system will be used to objectively measure the direction, the strength and timing of the three dimensional forces that athletes, that the athlete produces during hockey related movements. This is fine, I think this is great. I'm very confused by when they did this, is they do a vertical jump with a counter movement, then they have a no arm jump, and then they have a squat jump, which is when you start in a squatting position with your hands on your hips. Each jump will include three maximal effort vertical jumps separated by 10 seconds. So they're doing nine jumps separated by 10 seconds. I don't know why they do three jumps. I don't think it's necessary. I think if they're doing a broad jump, I honestly think they could just do a vertical jump and you're gonna get the data that you need. I think this just goes back to 
sports performance and the world of sports performance, we're really good at just trying to evaluate a million things instead of, if I'm looking at this and I'm going, okay, this kid's explosive, this kid can have a really good broad jump, his VO2 max is high, do we really need to do a no arm jump? Do we really need to do a squat jump? Like, no. So let's look at this. There's no other way that I can put this other than this, these results are terrible. This can't be, and, I, and I've thought this in the past, every year that they do this, I'm like, these kids have to jump higher than 25 and a half inches. They have to, it's not possible. And every year it's around 25 to 28 inches. It's terrible. And so what I don't get is that we have agents that represent them and then they find a strength coach and they think it's okay to pay some strength coach to prep them for the NFL, the NHL combine and they're jumping 25 inches and then they're not looking at what the guys in the NFL are doing. They're not looking at what 300 pound shot putters have 35 inch verticals close to, you know, Josh Sirachin, who's a top 15 discus thrower in the world, weighs 270 and has a 41 inch vertical. Guys, what are you doing? And, and, and we wonder, you know, like, this is me, hockey's a freaking awesome sport to watch. It's so fun to watch. Imagine if all these guys could jump 10 inches more. That's 10 inches more, more force in this gate. The game becomes faster. It becomes even more intense than it already is. It's gonna be a better, more attractive sport. Is this a good test? I think it's a fine test. Are the results okay? No, these results are not okay. They're not okay. And, and I'm just throwing that out there. Any of you guys that are NHL athletes or prospects and you need a place to train, hit us up. We will make you dominate this actual combine. You will totally destroy everybody in this combine because this is not, this isn't okay. Again, the squat jump, no arm jump, we'd help you with that as well. Okay, bench press, using a standard bench press, the athlete lifts 50% of their body weight laying on their back. So let's say you weigh 250, you take 125. They're gonna measure watts per kilogram. This is interesting actually, with a pause between each rep. I actually sort of like this as a test. I, I would have to play around with this to see where these results are. Cause we do, we use a test here where we'll do an explosive push up, And so our whole goal is to see if we can get athletes up over 20 inches on explosive push-ups. So, which is also funny because some of the vertical jumps that we saw were at like 21 inches. We have guys that can do explosive push-ups almost that high. So as far as power output from, from a 50% bench press, this is gonna show you like how rapidly someone someone can move their upper body. I think it's a great test. I don't know results wise. I would venture to say that we could improve that. So 510.5, 5, uh, multi-directional. This is actually probably one of the best tests that I think that they have in here. And relative to the NFL performances, I also think that the results show, you know, and this is something I talked about earlier, is that when you put a, a hockey player on dry land, they move so freaking well. They are so strong, so fast and precise with their cuts. And I think that this shows here, solid results here. Could they be a little better? Maybe, but the top guys are quick. I haven't seen videos of this actually. When I looked up the NHL Pro Agility, I hadn't seen any videos because I want to see if they have any different technical aspects related to the NFL guys. Now, pull-ups, this is cool. Athlete does as many consecutive pull-ups he can while maintaining correct technique. What I would be interested in is like, okay, let's say they do a max pull-up, okay, here. They rep out 15 pull-ups, then they rest like, or maybe they do it this way, okay? So they go, they select a percent of their body weight. So let's say a third of their body weight. So if you weigh 230, let's just say that they put on like 60, what would that be, 70? Yeah, 70 pounds about. They put on a 70 and they have to try to get that for five reps, something like that for a pull-up. Then they rest for 10 minutes and then they do a max out, a rep out. So you could see a unique ratio of power output versus endurance. I think that's just the big factor. I like this test. I think it's simple. You know, guys getting 15, I think they should all be able to get more than 13, 12 to 13. You know, we did a random YouTube video. I think I did 18, but these guys are, are freaks. And I, and I think that they're, they could be trained a little bit more effectively. Now, uh, anaerobic uh, fitness, the Wingate test, another phenomenal test here. I love this. I don't know the Wingate results as well, but I know that it's a really good test. It's extraordinarily hard. This is another one where I think this is like a direct correlation over to the world on the ice. 
Uh, I want to just read some of these comments are going to be funny, but I think the overarching theme is measuring power output and having some comparison to endurance capability. Some of the tests are phenomenal. The results need to improve 100%. And if the results improve the, the speed of the game, quality of the game, uh, the attractiveness, I think that's one of the big aspects around football now is how fast the game is. And I think that hockey is incredibly fast and it could get even faster, uh, which is just making it more entertaining to watch. So I do think some of these, these results need to be challenged as far as getting pushed. I want to know what their body fat discussion was. And if you guys need help with your training, I know I'm talking, people are probably going to start saying that I'm talking too much trash. If you guys need help with your training, you can hit us up, dane at garagestrength.com. I'll help you become a freak hockey player. And if you don't want to train with me, you can go to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store or the Apple iOS Store, and you can fill out that you want to train specifically for hockey. You can set that peak date. We can help you become a better hockey player. Because remember, freaks, if you want to become a champion, you've always got to cultivate your power. Peace.